Well, howdy diddly daddy there, chaps. Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chaps, for you guys in the viewerverse, I've got some speculation based around this dream aerial and what it actually says. Let's get to my scribble pad. Holy fudge, I forgot to put that ladder there in my excitement. I started climbing it. Well, let's head on over to the scribble pad and hit on up my speculation. Hexa Kitamondo! All right, it's over to me, is it? Right, fucking get, better get my hat on. <laughs> right. Anyhow, so when I created my dream aerial, <laughs> I flew into space and uh, I triggered an interaction with my living frigate. And these interactions, I'm wondering whether they might be an in-game roadmap for Hello Games to pry our little frickin' noggins out of a grey matter for ideas of what to put into iteration next. It's a bit of a strange theory, but it's one that I think might have legs, people. So anyway, I need to get those frickin' launch thrusters charged and get on up into space and interact with my living frigate. OK, so I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here and say just read this interactional text as if it's the developer talking to you as the player in a roundabout way, saying that we're kind of interwoven on this journey and that they know of us as a traveller in, in ways that we probably can't really fathom, which is kind of like it kind of breaks the fourth wall if you look at it in that sort of context. But not only that, the questions that it asks is the developer asking the player what they're most likely to to do or most likely to want to see in, in iterations to come or at least that's kind of what I'm, I'm using as a bit of a, a speculation type spin on this interaction so just go with it it's probably not it's probably just a bit of text you know how it is you know we've seen bits of text inside of no man's sky for ages now and they haven't actually came to anything but this is just playing with the words playing with the text of what we're seeing and the choices that we're being presented and could this be an in-game roadmap and could this information be in fed back to Hello Games to give them an idea of what the player verse wants to see. Now, one of the very first things you get asked is this. A bustling metropolis, a bus, bustling alien metropolis at that, idiom-veined mountains and megafauna ecosystems. I mean, wow, what do you pick out of those three? Let us know in the comments which one you picked. And if you're watching this as a premiere, I put up a poll. Heck yes. Freaking awesome choice. Wow. So let's just go through these one at a time. So the first off is bustling alien metropolis. Now, could this be done inside of game? I think it can, heck yes. So just replace all of the flora and maybe the minerals with building parts. Heck yes, it's done in a mod. So links down inside of the video description of where I found this bit of footage over on YouTube, but I believe this has been delivered into the verse via a mod. I mean, it looks like they've flattened out the freaking terrain for a start and then around the flat areas placed in giant cities and it looks like they've just replaced some of maybe the rock placements and how things are actually stacked together with building parts. Now it does look a little janky but I'm fairly confident that over in the Hello Game studio they could put something together that's a little bit more believable even if it was using relic based parts so there was like remnants of old alien races and societies well you know like we've got those little Yoda huts if they had more sorts of structures like that and maybe some in trees with rope bridges and stuff you know those little bipedal guys that we get running around the planets having those just littered with that sort of planet with those sort of structures on could make it almost feel believable that we've landed on an ancient ewok type tribe type planet which would be pretty sweet but you know if they did put relic parts in perhaps they could have the odd corvax walking around i've seen mods where people have replaced the fauna on planets with viking and gek and you know the, the corvax walking around out in the wilds like so they could quite easily do that replace the actual corner on planets with the character models and replace all of the flora and minerals or a good portion of them with building structures so it feels like an open metropolis now that you can see here it's losing quite a lot of frame rate so i'd imagine these base parts aren't that well optimized inside of this mod but hello games could put this sort of stuff together i'm fairly confident that they could anyway it's like when we saw the flying over so left prime they had all these industrial buildings all over the planet something as simple as that could work you know for this a bustling alien metropolis but yeah if you've got ideas sound off in the comments heck yeah because I think this could work quite well. 
So the next one here is Idiom Veined Mountains. Now at the moment our resource deposits are big sort of blobules and cratery type looking things, but it'd be nice to have more realistic looking sort of resource dumps or even crystallized planets. And again, this is delivered from another mod. So yes, this is delivered by another mod over on PC. So I got this from Scott Gust. Again, video links inside of the video description. But you can see here we've got resource crystals of pretty much every type on this planet. So I'd imagine that everybody would want a base on a planet like this just for resource gathering. And it looks freaking phenomenal. I mean, look at that. That's so cool, isn't it? So yeah, resourcey type planet. So it's just a case of replacing assets. Again, some of the trees and some of the flora or, or the minerals out with a load of crystals. And it works a treat. And I hope they do something with the caves in a similar sort of fashion. Crystalline caves. How cool would that be? Heck yeah. So this one I love. This is the one I chose. Megafauna Ecosystems. Now, I like the idea of being an intergalactic sort of predator. I mean, we've already got the cloaking device. Heck yes. <laughs> so yeah, why the fudge not? Go on hunting expeditions. International safari. In space. Even if it's just to catalogue and photo them rather than killicate them or murdercate them. But anyway, here we go. So the footage that you're seeing in the background here is from Monster Hunter World, one of my favourite games to play, mainly because I love giant fauna in games. And these giant faunas are so well imagined and they've got so much personality to them. And it just makes it a joy in finding them and learning about them and things like that. Now we've already got the discoverers page in No Man's Sky where you can discover all sorts of fauna and things and read about them. But this would take it to another level really. Having the dangerous fauna for people to go and hunt down and share coordinates for their, their big mega faunas that they've found. And you can see here that it's got very much a biome sort of feel to it. And each of the biomes have different sorts of creatures. So I feel that this could fit into No Man's Sky universe. I mean, yes, you don't want to deliver in giant freaking creatures like this where you've got to hunt them down and it's real skill based and you get freaking carted all the time. Or do you? I don't know. Let us know in the comments whether you'd like that sort of feel. I feel if you're landing on an alien planet that's got alien megafauna on there, there should be that feeling of intrepidation, that you are in danger, that something could just kick off at any time. And I feel that it does have a place in No Man's Sky, because one of the things that attracted me to No Man's Sky was the E3 gameplay trailer. I know I keep hitting this same freaking drum, people, and I'm like a broken record, but this is what I saw. This is what I wanted to play, because it had giant megafauna, like this giant Diplo in it, that feels more organic and feels more alive, and has that sort of stage presence as some of the creatures that we saw inside of Monster Hunter World. In fact, there's one monster that comes along in a second, an alien fauna, that smashes down all the trees you see all the birds flying up from the trees to get out the way of it and here it is kicking up a dust cloud you can see trees are actually freaking wobbling or getting freaking mashed and then loads of other creatures dart and run for cover so i think it has got a place in no man's sky because it was in their freaking trailer so i'd like to see that brought into iteration so You've got those three choices, but they were not the only three choices that we got given in this interaction with this actual living frigate. We got other choices around play style and options to choose. Now, some of these options that we got given choices for shows the sort of options you can do in certain situations, like you can patiently wait to be refueled, or you can go and get your own fuel. Now, these choices kind of already exist in a very basic form inside a game, but does that mean that they're going to go to town and maybe pad them out a bit and add a little bit of extra depth to each of these sort of choices? So it makes me wonder whether this is a roadmap, not just on what we would like to see, but also different sort of options and how we wish to play. And it's like that you could signal for intergalactic help, which we used to get with defense chips, but defense chips have kind of phased out slightly. I don't see anybody using defense chips, but could there be a piece of tech that lets you call in the sentinels if you're getting attacked by pirates or something? Could we go that way? Could you even become part of an intergalactic defense force? Or are they going to implement some sort of factions and things? It was also mentioned about that egg sack taking it away to study. Now we've got a scientific terminal. So what if they add in more to do with your actual specialists on your actual freighters or at your bases so you can take things to them for them to analyze, like maybe taking ancient bones over and they's like, actually, 
there could be a megafauna on this planet if you go to xyz coordinates you might find a megafauna you know there's certain ways that they could implement this stuff by going by what people are choosing inside of this kind of little roadmap inside game now if they've only just presented the roadmap i'd imagine the choices that we're seeing here are way off in the distance unless they've been cleverly working them on in the background but i'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings on all of this inside of the actual video description i mean not the description inside of the video comments please hit it up inside of the video comments cheers people in the viewer first thank you well there we have it people so yes i'm wondering and speculating whether this is some kind of roadmap and i know the one that i'm most intrigued about the megafauna you know what i'm going to ask with a wiki droid here what does megafauna actually mean wiki droid According to Wikipedia, in terrestrial zoology, the megafauna comprises the large or giant animals of an area, habitat, or geological period, extinct and or extant. For well, thanking you, Wikipedia droid. Heck yes. So there you go, people. That's the megafauna. That's the one I would most like to see. But how about you guys? Let us know in the comments which of those sort of three options that you are most tantalised about. Or yeah, just hit up any ideas in the comments, in fact, people. Until next time, you've been awesome. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve that little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.